Allied Electronics Corporation, known as Altron, reported diluted headline earnings per share of 82 cents for the six months ended August 2011 from 96 cents previously. Revenue declined to 11.5 billion rand from 11.7 billion rand, with profit for the period down to 321 million rand from 417 million rand. Results from operating activities stood at 590 million rand from 667 million rand earlier. Looking ahead, the company said its increasing emphasis was on growing the top line, which was a prerequisite for a return to profitable growth after having effected significant cost reductions in the business over the previous two years. Uh, Ultron market cap 2.7 billion, price earnings ratio 11.1 and a dividend yield of 4.2. Travis, we'll start with you. In a sense, we get a, a bit of a peak of these numbers because a week ago, Altec came out, uh, headline earnings there down 24. We had PowerTech or 41. Uh, Bikes, the only guys really doing much, and they, they came out with 28. Nice numbers from Bikes, the rest of the group, frankly, struggling. Yeah, I mean, I also looked at it today, not one of my favorite favorite stocks, but um, yeah, Bart's being the only one, as opposed to Altec and Paltec, which haven't produced results. I know the group did announce that they, they're looking at going, focusing on revenue from, from the ones that are producing and looking at cost cutting and looking at operations to get the most out of what would be Altec and Paltec. Mm -hmm. but Looking at these figures is a bit of problems in the camp. I, I mean, they say they're going to grow a top line and cut costs. I mean, the, what that, of course they're going to say. They have that, to say that. They have There's to say that. That's what they get paid to say. Yeah, I mean, the only, only thing that they've got is that it's, a, it's a very much a diversified portfolio. You know, you've got um, telecommunications, power electronics, um, multimedia, IT sectors, lots of different stuff. So maybe that can be used as a hedge in very volatile markets. Um, but not looking good on their figures and yeah, difficult to see where they're going to be able to cost cut and look for opportunities. Let's bring in Warren at the wall to take us through the Altron share price. It looks like not much is happening. It's gone sideways. You've got a support level there at 23 Rand. Take us through the chart, please. Yeah, sure. Um, since April last year, it has pretty much been range bound. Uh, one of the interesting things here really is that range is off the lows. So it hasn't really formed an, an ultimate lower base. It's moved off the lows and has given us a nice channel between uh, 21.90 and 31 Rand. Could be tradable for the short-term traders. Uh, for me, that would be slightly bullish. It's not breaking the lows. So we've come off the ultimate low, built a channel. Those lows are holding up. Uh, on the other side, of course, 31 Rand is also keeping resistance on the stock. Should it break to the upside, then uh, the next target would be about 40 Rand 70. You mentioned that channel and you could trade it. I mean, uh, let's say an entry of around 23 and exit around 30. It's about, what, 20 or 25 percent. Put some gearing on there. It's certainly tradable. And you For could sure. put your stop loss quite nice and close, around, what, 21.90, maybe a little 21.50. Nice risk to reward. Absolutely. Um, I use 21.90 as the low of, of that channel. Mm -hmm. uh, the price hasn't actually closed below 23 rand. So you could have a stop loss really tight at just below 23 or you could put it you know give it a little bit of space uh, and below 20 or 90 as a second stop my problem with it if, if you're looking to trade it in a, in, a, in this range is the the fact that um the volume you know doesn't speak to a trader's mind you know we look at volume no, we, you're 100 we, you know we, we want we want aggressive we look at the market almost down a thousand points today and i think this moved a total what 50 cents or, or something not, so a lot. not a lot of movement and not a lot of volume yeah. which would be my concern if i wanted to trade it and on to a that short point level. you've got a weekly chart there because of of yeah. lack of liquidity flowing Absolutely. through into it which, which is a which is a fair point and i hadn't checked on the volume before we came on travis back to numbers you mentioned having a tough time cash on hand down 600 odd million, down to 600 million. Um, we've got a negative cash flow, mostly because of working capital, fair enough. 1.4 billion debt, a, a, a overdraft sitting at 390 million. A balance sheet that is creaking, <coughs> frankly. Yeah, a um, lot of problems with the balance sheets and the, the numbers just seem to get worse and worse and worse. And it's gonna be difficult. The only thing that you could say is looking attractive is the, the yield. And a 4.2% dividend. Yeah, um, but then again, you know, that's not, if the stock keeps on piling, coming off, that would be a problem. So to try to trade it off just off the yield um, is, is not very good, but the figures aren't too good. How do you feel about the view, Travis, that they are paying lip service to things like climate change? They, they launched two global environmental initiatives and thinking about the COP17 forum coming up in Durban. Is the company really sincerely looking to invest in these initiatives and what impact is it going to have? Because the argument is that it's going to take a while for them to really regain any value from investments in these measures. I think firstly, um, I know that there's a lot of focus on organic growth and, and looking at that organic side of business. And I think every Every client's got to have a, a label. Every business got to have a label of being green in some way. Um, maybe to, to look at further acquisitions and look at broadening their market. 
I think there's a special attention needs to be made um, in-house um, and cleaning up you know, the, 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 the companies that aren't producing results. I mean, like you say, Bart's a strong performer. Mm -hmm. um, Altec and, and Powtech are um, not a strong performer. And I think that's going to be the main focus. Um, extending out to looking at organic growth is important, but where are they going to get the capital to do that? With a stretch balance sheet, and also some of their good assets. I mean, Autopage Cellular, which is owned in Altec, but when it flows through, it comes in at 26% of revenue for the for the Altron Group. I look at Autopage Cellular, and I look at a, at a stock that or a, a industry that is completely matured. I mean, and, and and viciously competitive with with not only the mobile operators but competitors there. And I look at something like that, and I say that that's a, an industry, a sector that's X growth. Sure, there's data, but data is moving cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Almost every day, there's a new data rate, and it's always lower than the early. And if you're looking at that, I'll take in that competitive space. I'd rather look at National Mobile with a, a company like Roynet, um, who seems to have got that handle a little bit better than than what this, this company seems to be doing. So you know, if that's where I'll put my money in in, in Roynet, and rather than and look at something like this. Well, let's find out if Warren thinks that Altron is a hot stock or not. What's your take? Uh, look, technically, Altron does look pretty hot. Pretty hot for you. Yeah. You're going to take that, that looking for that, uh, the, the potential bounce. And if it breaks the 31, you said that target is up to around the 40 level. Yeah, around 40 rand. Uh, it's a Fibonacci extension of 61% there. Uh, and of course, it was historical resistance. So, yeah, I think it's pretty hot. How about you, Travis? Hot or not? Unfortunately, looking at the figures that come out, uh, I would wait for a pullback. You know, maybe if it got to um, one of Warren's um, you know, support lines on the bottom of the channel. Maybe look at picking it up there. Um, what's at around 2190? 23. 23. 23, yeah. 23 would probably be a lower level. So at this price, <laughs> I wouldn't be buying it. And, and on the basis of the figures, let's see them do some housework, um, get their, their, their operations in order, and, and then maybe would be look. It's so not hot at the moment. Not hot for Travis. Simon Brown, an investment holding company, is only as good as its underlying assets. Uh, and these and underlying assets are under pressure. Not looking too yeah, good. There's some good stories there. Set top boxes. We've got to get nine million into the country by 20, I think 2013 or something like that. That's going to help them there in that space. But I look at a balance sheet that's under pressure. I'm not sure where they're going to start cutting costs. I'm not sure how they're going to significantly grow revenue. And and I come back to that balance sheet under pressure. Return in, return in equity of 9.9%. Uh, this is a company which is which is struggling, significantly struggling, and and it's tough out there. I'm saying Eltron. Not not hot. Not hot for Simon Brown. Let's move right along. South African and Zambian governments have approved the $1.1 billion bid by China's <coughs> Jinshuan Group for copper and copper producer Metrex, clearing the way for the deal to be finalized by November. In other news, Metrex said its copper output for the three months to end September rose 15% from the previous quarter. The company's copper production rose just over 15,000 tons, while cobalt production rose 11% to 942 tons. Metrex, uh, market cap was 7.8 billion, price earnings 17.3, no dividend. Travis, in a sense, I mean, this, this was all, and, and, and you know, we, we had we had uh, Oliver on the show on Friday, and he, yep. his comment, he actually liked it. And I, you know, below yep. eight rand, it was looking nice because there was a deal. Article by Stuart Theobald on Monday's paper, stock went to 7.10, and now the debate is, where are we? And they're, they're, they're broadly two stories. They've got most of the approval. The approval left is the Zambian finance ministry and then the, the Chinese government. They've got to get that approval. And I suppose in truth, we're speculating. No one actually knows. You've got to say there's an 890 offer on the table. Yeah, you know, coming back to Stuart Theobald and, and the article that he wrote, uh, you know, there was one person's opinion on, on what the deal is going through. Um, since then, we've seen, a, a, you know, we've had Zambia authorities, the mm -hmm. new government coming in, that affecting, which only accounts to about 2% of the actual business because most mm -hmm. of them the DLC, the yeah. stock took a bit, bit of pressure. You've got to understand <coughs> in this type of stock, we've got a lot of people that are long. We've seen the volumes increase drastically. I mean, today it was about 29 million. Friday we saw 42 million. So, you know, on any bit of news that comes out, be it truth or rumor or whatever, you know, the old saying, um, sell and rumor, buy in fact. And that seems to be the play that, you know, what's going on in the stock at the moment. We, we, fundamentally, let's look at the, the levels. You know, we, we've seen a senior delegation of metrics um, is about to head out to China, mm -hmm. to the Jingxia Group, to have, to have a meeting. Um, you know, we've got approval from the Chinese. Yes, the, the, the stock is, is trading cheaper now. But do you not think they would have factored in the, t the decrease in the copper price or the, or the RAND price? You know, they the want copper the price doesn't care about them. I mean, my sense of what Chinchon wants here is they want to buy Metrix. They don't want to sell that copper on the open market. They want to stick it on a ship and take it back to China. It's about securing supply rather well, than Well, that's it. If, you, if you look at where they're getting supply from and what's going to, and BHP Bulletin has major con con supply constraints in copper from um, the likes of um, Chile where they're having you know, wage disputes and strikes and they're having problems with their ports. We've seen this company come in to South Africa and look at Wizware, 
We swear they're platinum and looking at, we swear they're platinum looking to buy that. Now they're looking at um, you know the metrics. It's a nice rand hedge when you've got your most your all your exposure offshore. You know the deal. I, I think from my side, um, these guys want the deal regardless of where the price is trading at. The reason they had to get to the 890 was because of the break clause and the penalty clauses yes. coming in from the counter offer by the previous, the first offer. The first from, offer from the Brazilians. <coughs> and in truth, what they needed to do was also to make it significantly sweeter, not exactly. just come in an extra five cents. 100 percent. And I mean, yes, the, the weaker rand and, you know, since the deal has escalated, we've seen it down about 20 percent since then. And these are all factors that are affecting the stock and we're seeing it under pressure. Um, we're seeing a lot of traders coming in and trade the ranges. Take, for instance, I, I was buying it at 7.19 yesterday and selling it at 7.17, you know, making 7% 7, 7 on the trade. I am holding it long term. I am holding it in my personal capacity. But there's a lot of day traders coming in because there's such volatility with the stock. And we're also seeing, I know we've seen the stock coming under pressure, but let's, let's also remember, look at um, BHP Bulletin. That's down at, at 2.08, um, 2.10. I think it closed at 2.13. That's also being influenced by the copper price. So the stock is being hit by the copper price. The deal is set to go through, and we are seeing approval from the various boards. And now Zambia has come through and saying, we're not going to fight China on this deal. We need the business. Mm -hmm. um, so as soon as there's any sign of speculation, you see guys panic and, and start selling. And because there's so many people who long only the stock, there's pressure there. But I think in the merits of the trade and the merit of the deal, um, I think there is there's room for this trade to go through. Let's bring in Warren at the wall. The, the share price being more or less on an upward trajectory since that initial offer was 735 and pretty much that 890 level acting as a ceiling. Well, technically I don't think we, we can really look at the share overall. Uh, it is in a long uptrend. That deal came in at 3 Rand 65. Mm -hmm. Since then the stock has moved, went through the level of 735 which was the initial offer. Uh, headed up close to 890 and of course uh, as Trevor was saying earlier we had that volatility so technically I don't think I'd be looking to yeah, trade it Warren, on that this basis. this is more a know? stock that you trade you don't look at the chart you look at there's an 890 in the table stock goes to 710 as it does on Monday and if you if you're a courageous trader you say heck we, we, yeah. we take it and we jump it, it's not about the chart it's about the 890 level more than anything. Yeah it's about the company. But if, even if you look if you put on the chart if you put the 200 day moving average you'll see that that line bounced off that 200-day moving average. And from a technical point of view, it did come off, but it did bounce, and there was um, support from that 200-day where we saw the bounce. Travis, what is unusual is, is typically when a takeover is announced and there's a price on the table, what, what we tend to see is the stock move to within about 5% of it because of the cost of time of money, and they kind of sit there and volumes disappear. And we saw it around 8.30 doing, doing that. that and uh, what, what's really weird here, I mean, see what, 26 million shares going through? I mean, we're seeing massive activity. And this is a trader's heaven. If you, I mean, there's a I mean, there's always some risk Correct. out there, but an unusual circumstance, and that's, I think, in part why, it, why, why it, 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 it's out there, it's on Twitter, heck, it's on hot stocks. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, exactly, you know, um, a lot of guys are tweeting about it, there's a lot of interest about it, and um, I don't think you could say that um, to all those traders or all those investors out there thinking, let me get in now because it's at 890. There's always, there's always got to be a question of doubt that something can go wrong, um, but, you know, the deal is there, and from what we're seeing on the fundamental side, things are being put in plan from the Chinese side, from the Z um, Zambian side, from Xinxiang side, you know, so metrics, like I say, the, the delegation of management going across there, you know, and it's all within the process. They, Xinxiang has come out and metrics has come out and saying the process is with staying within its course. Mm -hmm. um, and they're saying by November it will be tied up. Exactly. And let's see, you know. So Warren, is it technically hot or technically not so hot? How do uh, you feel about metrics? Uh, I wouldn't comment on it. Uh, I don't <laughs> think it's a, it's no a technical. Comment. Yeah. It's, I think it's a trader stock with that yeah. 890 target. It is. Uh, technically, I don't think it's anything. Travis, you're happy with the fundamentals. Does that mean you're giving it a hot thumbs up? I have to give it a hot thumbs up because of the fundamentals that are coming out. And I think, yeah. Simon Brown, were you surprised that the Zambian government approved this deal, given the new President Michael Sutter's view as being anti-Chinese? I, I mean, it's a tough one. I, I, I mean, he cancelled the first round deal I mean, just yesterday. They were yeah. supposed to buy it. It was a small deal for first round, and, and, and he turned around and cancelled it, which was an oddity. But I think as in, when you're a new president in, you, you, you want to do two things, and they contradict you two times. In one sense, you want to stamp your, your, your name on, on everything and, and be the new person in power. On the flip side of the coin, you don't want to rock the boat. So maybe he chose first round to stamp his authority, and he'll pick Metrorex to not rock the he boat. Also, he also fired um, a whole central bank. <laughs> so let's let's be realistic. You know, he's coming in there. Um, he's got people that are allies, 
and he's got people that aren't and I think he's just doing yeah. a bit of cleaning house mm. but he needs this deal and I think the first round we could see some some and change in attitude. So I think it's important as much as the, the theories doesn't like the Chinese. The truth of the matter, China's important in Africa and there's pros and cons and we could debate that forever, but China's important. Uh, my take on Metrix is it is not without risk, but if you're prepared to, to take some risk and you are a trader, this is trade and not an investment by any sense. If you can pick it up below that, that sort of eight rand and, and ride it to around the middle eights and you're talking 5%, add some gearing, it's nice trading, but there are going to be some wild swings as we saw yesterday. And I think probably we're going to find that volatility actually creeping out to a degree because what Stuart Theobald's article did has suddenly brought a, a lot more a lot more confirmation a lot more information out into the space you know, uh, sense announcements from Metarex statements from from the various parties talking about it here I think maybe in fact we're going to see a little bit less volatility and then that that trade from 790 to 840 becomes attractive for the traders not the investors for the traders and not for the investors thank you Simon Brown